Now, indeed, thank you. Yep, thank you. District Governor Carol Tickleman is with us today. She grew up in Vancouver and spent eight years in Prince George, British Columbia as the branch manager with Canada Trust. While there, she joined Rotary in 1992. In 1995, Carol moved to Chilliwack to get closer to family and friends and opened her own financial planning practice and joined the Chilliwack Rotary. Carol is a Paul Harris Fellow, a major donor and benefactor of the Rotary Foundation, a recipient of the Avenues of Service Citation from Rotary International in recognition of her lengthy service to Rotary, her church, and her community. That's a lot. In 2004, Carol went to Mexico for four days with 20 other Rotarians and family members to deliver a container of wheelchairs. That started her passion for international service. Carol has been to Ethiopia and Uganda to perform Rotary service. Uh, started that in 2009. She participated in their polio National Immunization Days. She's been to seven Rotary International Conventions. In 2015, Carol received the Rotary Foundation's International Service Award for a Polio Free World. And in 2016, she received Rotary Service Above Self Award. Please welcome our district governor, Carol Tickleman. Thank you, Assistant Governor Duane. As past RI President Dr. Dockerman often said, that is by far the most recent introduction I've had. So good afternoon, President Bryce, fellow Rotarians and friends. And I see many friends on these Hollywood squares before me. It's truly an honor to serve as district governor of this amazing district for the 2020-2021 Rotary year. I'm so proud of the clubs and Rotarians in this district. Almost all of Rotary went dark in the middle of March. A pandemic, what the heck? Everything in our playbook was not working. None of our district or club leadership trained for this. But distance doesn't separate us, silence does. We're all going through this pandemic storm together, but every club, and every member is in a different boat. Within two weeks of the shutdowns, the district offered every area a COVID response grant. Clubs started adapting to the new reality and serving our communities and our members with thoughtful action. Rotarians are people of action and you've proved that in spades over the last seven months. When we come out of the other side of this pandemic, I truly believe that our clubs will be more incredible, more dynamic, and much more connected and effective than we were in the old normal. Rotary President Holger Knock asked four things of the incoming governors at the International Assembly in January. Goodness, that was only nine months ago, but there are some days that it seems like a decade ago. He said Rotary is not just a club that you join. It's an invitation to endless opportunities. It opens opportunities to serve in a project as big as End Polio Now, and in also a small community project where you might plant a tree. Everything that we do opens another opportunity for someone somewhere. President Holger's first ask of the incoming governors was to create new innovative club models to help expand outreach by creating a satellite club or a community-based Rotaract club. And since March, it has been proven that this can be done even during a pandemic. President Holger's second ask was that each club have at least one strategic meeting asking what should our club look like in five years? 
and what steps should we take to achieve this vision? What value do we bring to our members? President Holger's third ask was to select new members carefully. Make sure they're a good fit with your club and that the club meets their expectations. Engage them and take care of them. There is no wrong age to become a Rotarian. President Holger's fourth ask was to continue your club's efforts to end polio by donating to end polio now. We must fulfill our promise that we made to the children of the world. And I think, thank your club and members for your strong support of Polio Plus. And of course, I have to recognize Lee Harmon's amazing Miss Vicky journey. It's now nine months since the International Assembly. Our lives have changed, but the goals to open opportunities have not. We are Rotarians and we must remain optimistic and continue to seek opportunities to engage members, grow Rotary membership, fundraise and perform service project, projects or projects, depending on which side of the border I'm on. The Rotary Citation has changed dramatically in the last two years. And this new framework for clubs to set their own goals annually is a strong message from Rotary International that Rotary happens at the club. Your club can choose which door to open and which path to use. The only required item to obtain the citation is paying your dues promptly, and you did that, so thank you. As Rotary's vision statement says, together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. As past RI President Ian Risley often says, Rotary gives ordinary people the opportunity to do extraordinary things. Think of how less rich your community would be now if your Rotary Club had never existed. Your community and the world needs Rotary now more than ever before. As Paul Harris, our founder once said, Whatever Rotary may mean to us, to the world, it will be known by the results it achieves. In late 2018, Rotary asked the John Hopkins University to do a study on the impact of Rotarians on the global economy. And that study came back with a conservative estimate of 850 million US dollars annually, but it would cost communities around the world if they had to pay for the services that Rotary volunteers provide. And 47 million volunteer hours generated by Rotary members in a typical year. On the Rotary brand front, the People of Action campaign brings the Rotary brand to life by highlighting what happens when community leaders within Rotary join together, share their vision, exchange ideas about solutions, and then take action to make it a reality. Rotarians share a unique passion for taking action to improve their communities and the world. Where others see problems, we see solutions. This is our chance to show others how Rotarians see what's possible in their communities and to highlight what we can achieve when more community leaders join Rotary. We are people of action. And we're all united and guided by the four-way test. Integrity is what you do when nobody is watching. When I first asked to join Rotary in 1992, I did so as I was a bank manager and it was expected of me to be involved in the community. Shortly after I joined, I learned of Rotary's corporate project to eradicate polio. That touched my heart as my father was a victim of polio. I knew one day I would participate in a National Immunization Day, and that day came in October 2009 when I went to Ethiopia for the first time. And this vial is the one that I used when I immunized my first child. With every um, subsequent child that I have immunized on that and the eight other NIDs I've been on, 
I have felt gratitude for anyone who has ever donated to the Polio Plus program. Although I don't speak Amharic, and nor do the villagers that we met as we went hut to hut spoke English, with every child that I have immunized, every mummy has looked deep into my eyes, and my soul was filled with the thanks they were expressing from saving their child from the ravages of polio. Those children will face many challenges in their lives, but they will not be crippled nor potentially die from polio. Just over a month ago, on August the 25th, the World Health Organization announced that transmission of the wild polio virus has officially been stopped in all of Africa. This milestone is an incredible public health achievement for Rotary members, the African region, and our Global Polio Eradication Initiative partners, and a huge step forward on the road to global polio eradication. But we still have important work to do in order to eradicate wild polio in the last two endemic countries. Year to date, there have been 74 cases in Pakistan and 51 in Afghanistan. We faced many challenges in our journey to eradicate polio but we've made remarkable progress and the polio infrastructure that Rotarians helped build will serve as a lasting legacy that will continue to help protect vulnerable children against other diseases for decades to come. And these same polio workers have been very active in COVID response and surveillance throughout the developing world since March. Other exciting news from RI was the announcement that Jennifer Jones will serve as RI president in 2022-23. Jennifer is a Canadian and from our very own Zone 28, and she's the first woman nominated to lead our organization. As Rotary International President nominee, Jennifer's nomination continues to demonstrate Rotary International's commitment to diversify its leadership and specifically to fulfill the RI Board of Directors pledge that was made in January of 2019 for the number of women in Rotary and in Rotary leadership positions to be 30% by June of 2023. Rotary also continues to grow and expand its commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and has started a monthly webinar series on the topic. At the district, we're also developing a DEI program. And I thank past district governor, Linda Jean Coyle for le leading this initiative. Paul Harris said, Rotary must always be evolutionary and at times revolutionary. Another recent announcement from RI was the decision by the Rotary Foundation trustees to add a seventh area of focus with the addition of the environment. More information will come on this as the program is being developed for inclusion in global grants in July of 2021. Another initiative at the district is that we are starting a district-wide blood donation, friendly competition to encourage our members to regularly participate in this life-saving humanitarian act. And I know your club regularly holds blood drives, so thank you. I was a casual blood donor early in my life. Then in 1996, as my family worked collaboratively to take care of my father at home in palliative care, and on my birthday, I took dad for a blood transfusion. That dramatically improved his quality of life in his last two weeks of life. And I've been a committed blood donor ever since. I just completed my 68th blood donation. Governor-elect Bev Harrington is also a lifelong committed blood donor. I just sent the information to President Bryce about the competition, and I encourage you, your family, and your friends to participate if you're able. We've been really busy in District 5050. Another new initiative is that we are taking the Rotary and Toastmasters Alliance to an active program. We thank Stephanie Hooper and Carl Garrison in leading this. And our first step is to identify any Rotary member in our district who is or has been a member of Toastmasters. So if you are or you have been, let us know. We're also having our first training on this at the end of the month. 
So if you're interested in leadership and speech craft training, register for the programs on the district website. We're also working at the district to assist clubs to work collaboratively on global grants. This is happening more each year, and we encourage clubs to work together with their international service funds to allow Rotarians to do community service on a global scale. There is a water and sanitation grant in the works for Kenya. If you want to partner in an international project and not have to do any of the grant writing and work. Rotary opens opportunities. How prophetic for that theme to come after last year's theme of Rotary Connects the World as we work through a pandemic. If there is a viable treatment or vaccine, next May, Chilliwack's doors will be open. Building on the RI theme logo, the district conference theme logo shows six doors. And those six doors represent the four Rotary Clubs, the Rotaract and the Interact Clubs in Chilliwack. And you'll be seeing that graphic shortly on upcoming promotional materials. We will be offering homestay along with home hosted dinner on the Friday night. We've got a great lineup of speakers borrowing in part from this year's canceled conference. We'll be celebrating the 2019-2020 club and district leadership and we'll host a cocktail party for them to celebrate together as they weren't able to this past spring. And of course, we'll be celebrating the district and club leadership and successes from this Rotary year. We'll have lots of opportunities to showcase our beautiful city of Chilliwack, including a tour at the new Molson Coors Brewery, a circle farm tour, an excursion to the Blue Heron Interpretive Center, and the extensive Rotary Trail system, to name just a few. So mark your calendars. And we look forward to welcoming everyone to Chilliwack in May of 2021, hoping that we can gather together. So watch for more news on this on the district website and in the Peace Arch Journal monthly newsletter. And speaking of the Peace Arch Journal, I encourage you to submit articles and pictures as you do projects throughout the year. Your amazing work on your ongoing blood drives, your scholarships, and the Gaga Pit I learned something new when I saw the pictures of, about that. That was cool. And your historic dust, duck dash when you're able to get back to it. Please share these pictures and stories with other members in our district. And then there's the Rotary International Convention in Taipei in June of 2021. I was sad not to go to Honolulu this year. I love attending the Rotary International Conventions. With each one that I have attended, my awe at the internationality and amazingness of Rotary expands. I have to admit, admit that while I may not be able to go to Taipei next June due to the pandemic, I was giddy with excitement as I registered for the convention with the thought of eventually traveling again one day. So I encourage you all to consider planning for Taipei next June with the knowledge that your registration will fees will be refunded if we're unable to go. And now I'll end by sharing one of my Rotary moments. I was so lucky to be raised in a wonderful family. We were not wealthy, but we were rich with values, faith, respect, love, and many other things that I treasure. I have three brothers. I was daddy's girl. Mum loved me deeply, but we did not have a strong mother-daughter bond or friendship. We clashed often, and when I was an adult, it was often about my involvement in Rotary. We're Catholic. She always questioned me about why I was spending so much time volunteering for Rotary and not doing that work through the church. I'm very involved in my church, but Mum still wanted me to do all my volunteer work through the church. As I mentioned, my father passed away in 1996 at the age of 68. Following dad's death, I always included mom in my travel plans, including my company conferences. And as you heard in 2004, my Rotary Club planned a trip to deliver a container load of wheelchairs in Mexico. And mom came with me and 19 other fellow club and family members. Like most Rotary International Service projects, there are profound moments through that service work. 
And this one occurred on the very first morning. My mom really uncharacteristically turned to me with tears streaming down her face. And she said to me, you are truly doing God's work on earth. Mom, who had metastatic breast cancer at the time, worked tirelessly the following days from dawn till dusk as we delivered the gift of mobility. The following year, I was president of my Rotary Club and mom drove out to Chilliwack from Vancouver about an hour's drive each way on many Fridays for the club meetings. That year, mom became a multiple Paul Harris fellow. Two years later, mom became a legacy donor to the Rotary Foundation, our foundation. That shared Rotary experience in Mexico allowed me to become best friends with my mother in her last three years. Rotary truly changes lives in ways that we might never imagine. So thank you for sharing you with Rotary. And I look forward to serving as your district governor this year. And I'll now entertain questions if there are any, as we continue to work together to grow Rotary, increase and expand our impact and have fun while we do so. Thank you. District Governor Carroll, what was the date of the district conference this coming year? Um, it's gonna be May 13th to 16th, 2021. Great, thank you. Carol, uh, this is Jean T Chase talking. I don't know if you noticed on our roster, we have a Jennifer Jones in our club and you can tell R.I. that if they're short, she'll be glad to substitute for uh, the other Jennifer Jones. I will definitely je let Jennifer know that. She's actually going to be um, our speaker at our foundation gala event on November the 6th. Okay. Yeah. Our Jennifer Jones is a very good person. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Congratulations, Steve. Jenny. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. <laughs> You probably saw her face when you were, if, if you were coming into Arlington, which you didn't, you're, you're on Zoom, but one of the billboards coming into town, we, we have to see Jennifer Jones's picture. Question, right. Carol, I, it looks like some coffee corners are starting again. Are th those, are you hosting those or? Um, Foundation Chair Malcolm and I are hosting those. Uh, so it's gonna run through November for Foundation Month. And what's, who's the slate of speakers? Uh, Bre Brenda Cressy, who is past Foundation Chair last year, is the first Wednesday in November. Um, the second Wednesday in November, we're not doing it because that's Veterans Day in, in the States and Remembrance Day in Canada. Um, the third week is Mike McGovern, chair of the Polio Plus Committee and past Rotary International Vice President. And the last week is past RI President Ian Risley. When are and, these, when, Wednesday at noon? When, um, when? The, first, the first two, uh, Brenda Cressy and Mike McGovern are gonna be at 10 o'clock our time on Wednesday. And Ian Risley, because he's gonna be zooming in from Australia with the time difference, um, that's gonna be at uh, 7 p.m. cocktail hour. Thank you. And the registration is open for that on the district website now. District Governor Carroll, could you explain a little bit about the partnership with Toastmasters? Uh, uh, past district, Assistant District Governor Dave shared with me that partnership, but I couldn't find any Toastmasters to give a presentation um, last year. And I, I'm not sure I quite understand the relationship and how we find people to talk. Um, I can definitely connect somebody with you if, if you would like. Um, just, just get a hold of me. We've, uh, the, the Alliance started at the Toastmasters International and Rotary International level. Um, Rotary recognized that um, Toastmasters excels internationally at providing uh, leadership training and speech craft training. And that's something that Rotary has been good at with the senior leadership, but not at the club level. So they started negotiating this alliance a couple of years ago and the initial product was, is 
seven amazing um, training sessions that Toastmasters crafted for Rotary and they're available on the Rotary Learning Center. So I encourage anybody to take that, uh, take those courses. And at the district level where we've started, I've met my counterparts with Toastmasters, um, which covers two different Toastmasters divisions, um, one, one on the Canadian side and one on the US side. And we're, we're getting um, a cadre of Toastmasters speakers that are, are prepared to be presenters at Rotary Clubs. And we're encouraging the Toastmasters um, club presidents and the Rotary Club presidents to introduce themselves to each other, invite the Toastmasters members to your, your um, hands-on service projects and because they don't have a service component to the Toastmasters membership. And we feel that that could create some cross-germination of membership between the two organizations. I was a Toastmaster, it's a good organization. So, hey Bob, we did have uh, Stephanie Hooper who did a, a pres short presentation at one of our meetings. Did you miss that or? Good. DG Carol Lee here. Where do you, where do you uh, find the updated uh, numbers uh, for polio? I was just online at the uh, polio eradication.org, which I've always used, and they're still using 102. Uh, cases, um, and they say it's as of the 14th, um, but that's the number that I found two weeks ago. So I wonder where you find your updated uh, polio numbers. Um, I, 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 I just Googled polio case counts. Um, there was a, 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 an error in the total from three weeks ago. So they didn't update the, uh, they, they announced that there were five new cases that week, but they didn't update the totals for Afghanistan and Pakistan. So I think that's the difference between the numbers that I gave Lee and what you might've seen. Thanks, I just wondered where you found them, but polioeradication.org has been pretty reliable with the case breakdowns and everything else, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to keep the number correct when I give my chats. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I think the, the website I get it from Lee is the Global Polio Eradication Initiative um, yeah, website, yeah. the GPEI. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Did everyone notice uh, how cute uh, John Peter's uh, daughter was uh, sleeping in his arms? It was, uh, she was paying close attention, Carol, but um, I think, I don't know, he's not on there now. He must be changing diapers. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Lee. Yeah. It's, it's a, a boy, Lee. It's a boy. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I can see that now with the colors of the. Oh, yes. Thank you. I yeah. The, the if, other if two are, are girls. Yeah. If there aren't oh. any further questions, it's become a tradition in our district that um, when the governor does a visit, the club gets to recognize a couple of unsung heroes um, those silent worker bees that just help make the club operate. Past District Governor Brad and I um, got together last year and we decided that we were going to use the People of Action pins, which you can see here, um, to recognize those individuals. The pins are in the mail to Dwayne to get to your recipients. So President Bryce, do you want to announce who the recipients are this year? Sure. Um, so the uh, recipients, uh, the first one is uh, Jim Kelly. So uh, I was... Um, thoroughly impressed by uh, Jim's uh, blood drives and things and, and doing projects for our service committee uh, that allowed us to be safe in the COVID-19 environment. So uh, Jim Kelly, congratulations. Uh, Thank you very much, Bryce. Yep. And the second one uh, was for Yola and her effort uh, to, to do raise funds for a dry duck dash. So, uh, so far we've raised, um, as of last night, it sounds like we're above 50, maybe to 55,000 headed towards 60 for uh, student scholarships. So that's uh, an amazing job uh, to uh, rally the troops around a time where uh, there isn't a duck dash and, and businesses uh, get that they're, um, 
they're not really paying for advertising uh, this year. Uh, they're really doing it for the good of the community. So uh, that's fantastic. Well done, Yola. And congratulations, Yola. And that's, uh, that's it for the uh, people of action pins. Uh, did you want me to proceed with the uh, PHF? Uh, please, if uh, you, uh, John, did you, do you have those yep. names from John? Perfect. Yep, thank I got you, it. Carol. Yeah, so, so thank you, President Bryce and Foundation Chair John for asking me to do this presentation. For the benefit of guests or newer members, the presentation of Paul Harris Fellows recognizes, recognition, sorry, is our foundation the Rotary Foundation's way of expressing its appreciation for a substantial contribution to its humanitarian and educational programs. It's named for our founder, Paul Harris, a Chicago lawyer who started Rotary International with three business associates in 1905. Paul Harris Fellow Recognition has been decorating our Rotary Foundation's passionate supporters for many years. It's a proud tradition that honors the memory of our founder. I believe that he would be deeply moved to see all that Rotarians and friends of our foundation have done and continue to do in the name of his beloved organization. The objective of the Rotary Foundation is to do good in the world. And these members fully embrace that ideal. A world of peace and goodwill comes closer to reality today. It is because of gifts like ones made by these members over the years that the Rotary Foundation is able to carry out an array of programs and achieve beneficial changes in our world. Improved living conditions, increased food production and security, better education, wider availability of medical treatment and rehabilitation for the sick and the disabled. New channels for the flow of international understanding and brighter hopes for peace. A contribution to the Rotary Foundation is an investment in the ideal of goodwill, peace and understanding. And that is an ideal held high by Rotarians the world over and one that these members clearly share. Working with such individuals of goodwill, we believe that ideal will become a reality. I'm pleased this afternoon to recognize Paul Harris plus one recognition for uh, Simona De Vries. Good job. And Paul Harris plus Oops. and Paul Harris plus eight recognition for Dave Duskin. So thank you, Simona and Dave, for using your time, talent, and treasure to enhance the lives of others. On behalf of the club the dis district and our foundation trustees, I thank you. Please wear your pins with pride in honor of all the lives that you will reach through your generosity. So fellow Rotarians, please, please join me in showing our appreciation to Simona and Dave for their support of our foundation. Great, thank you, uh, Carol. So it looks like we do have enough time uh, to go through uh, happy dollars if there's no more questions for uh, the district governor. And uh, I'll, I'll st we'll start off with uh, Mr. Paul Harris plus eight. <laughs> 